Unfortunately, no, because the truck is also wider than a chocolate bar. And if the truck is wider than a chocolate bar, I have to think about how the amount of chocolate in that truck scales as I make the thing not just longer, but also wider and taller. So there's a line. Now, supposing I make an exact copy of that, and so I have a line that's twice as big, obviously, if I was to have to pay per unit length, I would have to pay twice as much for that. But supposing I started with a square, and now I make that length twice as big, if I have two of those squares, now obviously that's not a square. In order to make a square that's twice as long on each side, I actually have to make four of those squares. And so I've doubled this length, the length of a side, and I've doubled the length of the other side. So in effect, I've doubled twice, and two times two is four. And so I've doubled the length and I've quadrupled the area. You can see that algebraically very easily. The area for a rectangle is just the height times the width. So if I double the height and I double the width, I'm going to get four times the height times the width, which is four times the original area. And if you know the formula for the area of different shapes, you can show that the same thing works for other shapes too. You might be able to do a circle, or you might be able to do a triangle and so forth. But in fact, this is true for absolutely any shape. If you have any shape at all, you can always break it up into little squares. And the total area of the shape is just the total area of adding up all these little squares. So if I were to double the size of the shape in all directions, then I would double the size of all those squares in both directions, and so I would quadruple the area. And indeed, if I take any length in here at all, what I can say is that the area scales as L squared. So this symbol here just means proportional to. So the area is some number times L squared. And so if I were to double that length L, then I would quadruple the area. Or if I was to increase that L by 1.5, then I would increase the area by 2.25, which is 1.5 squared. Now you don't buy chocolate by the area, by the square meter or square centimeter or something like that. You buy chocolate by the kilogram or by the gram. And the mass of something is proportional to its volume. Okay, so it doesn't just matter how wide and how long the chocolate bar is, it also matters how thick it is. Now if I take a cube and double its length, width and height, you can see that I have eight times as many cubes. And that's not surprising algebraically. We can see that if we have a volume and it's a height times a width times a depth, and if we double all of those, then we're gonna end up with eight times the height times the width times the depth, which is eight times the volume. And again, that works for any shape at all. So if I have some solid, I can always break my solid up into little cubes. And if I change some characteristic length scale of my solid, then when I change that length scale, I'm going to change the size of all the cubes. All the cubes are going to go as L cubed, the cube of that length, L. And so my total volume, when I add it all up, is going to go as the cube of length L.